Hi everyone, it's good to be back again. Recently I stopped by a sale at a local theatre company who was selling a bunch of costumes and props from various productions. I did pick up some interesting items. One item in particular was this jacket. I've been looking around anyway for like a heavier jacket that I could just wear in the cold weather. Once I brought it home and had a closer look, I just saw more of the damage, like the lining was pretty beaten up. A lot of the edges were quite badly abrased and there's a wee bit of work to do to it. But at least that gave me the opportunity to transform it into something new and for myself. I also picked up this pleather skirt on the same day at another secondhand store, so I think they are destined to be together. So today I thought I would go through how I upcycled these garments and customise them. I'll also take a moment to just chat about what's been happening behind the scenes because a lot has happened since the last video, but without further ado, let's get right into it. Before actually working on the garments, my germaphobe instincts kick in and I have to clean everything first. The jacket lining used to be quilted and all of the wadding on the inside had rotted over time so it was falling out which was just lovely. I ended up just giving up and throwing the entire jacket into the bathtub to scrub it down. I think that was the better option because the water did turn into a very interesting colour by the end of it. Only after the jacket was washed I realised it was taking forever to dry. <laughs> It was at that moment when I realised that the jacket itself was actually made of real leather as opposed to the skirt, which was made of artificial leather or pleather. Turns out when I brought it, the leather itself was just so incredibly dry that I thought it was artificial. I'll just say that it wasn't necessarily my intention to buy leather as it's a little bit trickier to care for and we know where it comes from being an animal product. But I did buy this from a secondhand source where it has been used for many years and with some care and attention I think it will last for many more years to come. If this can at least be an opportunity for me to show you how to reinvent a garment to prevent it from being thrown out too early, I would like to think I can give it a try. So before anything else I needed to make sure that the leather was well cared for and had a bit more flexibility to it. Using some old leather oil that my parents used on horse saddles years before I was born, I slathered on about three or so coats, just letting it soak in each time. Once the leather was all oiled up and had some more flexibility to it, it was time to start repairing the jacket. The lining itself was just beyond repair and needed replacing. I cut the lining out of the garment, leaving a few centimetres as a border remaining to sew the new lining back onto it. It was about now when you could really see how rotted the lining was. I really don't know how old this jacket is. I would say it was probably a decade, maybe even two, but I would love to know what productions it was worn in for all those years. After rolling up as much fuzz as humanly possible, I dismantled the lining pieces by unpicking the seams, so we were left with the front pieces, the back and the sleeves. Roughly using the pieces as a guide, I cut out the new lining with a generous seam allowance. It was better to have the pieces be too big where they could be taken in instead of too small. And since the original lining had a lining pocket and I was feeling too lazy to make a new one, I cut that out too. Reattaching the lining pocket was just like a patch really, making a small split for the pocket bag to thread through. Simply just tack down the edges by hand to keep them in place and sewed around the edges, it was done pretty quick. To help style it up a little, I added a name label. There really isn't a reason for this aside from the fact that I still have a few dozen of these from school and I really need to start using them up. <laughs> then I was just constructing the lining, so front pieces to the back shoulder seams, then inserting the sleeves and then just closing it by going down the sleeve and the side seam together just so I didn't have to match it up and it just made the process a lot easier. Before adding the lining I wanted to add an additional personalised label for the garment. I have a brother scan and cut machine which is more commonly used and marketed as a quilting project product but it also works very well as a vinyl cutter. Once it's all cut, you just iron it on, peel it off, it's a breeze. I might end up making a video in the future about this process because I think it is a very cool way to customise garments in a very easy way. With the lining itself all finished, the only thing left is to add it to the jacket. 
Since there was a small allowance left on the original lining, I pinned and sewed the new lining to that instead of sewing it directly onto the leather, which saved me a lot of stress and pain, even if it took a little while to do. So now the jacket and the squat are ready for what is probably the best part of this entire project. I picked up this Jacquard Exciter pack of paint because I've heard that it is suitable on leather and pleather products, so now is the perfect opportunity to try that out. I started by filling in areas with abrasions with the black paint, which actually was a very good match to the leather itself. This helped to freshen up the jacket in particular. A little later on, I also filled in the brown suede areas of the skirt with black paint as a way to dye it. I started by just testing the paints on areas like pockets to see how translucent the paints are. Since the colours are metallics, they are definitely more sheer and will need either a few coats to make it pop or to layer white underneath first as a base colour, which I ended up doing next anyway. Painting on the white layer first helped work as a guideline for where I would paint the colours next. Since the actual garments were a perfect match to the black paint, it was a good safety net for when I went outside of the lines. My painting process was to outline in white first, then colour it in with the metallic paints and finish with black paint to clean it up. So while you enjoy watching the painting of the rest of the outfit, I'll just take this moment to have a chat about what's been happening behind the scenes. We all know about the pandemic and how the world is being affected by it, physically, financially and definitely emotionally. I am grateful that my family have only been affected as much as we have so far. We are far from being out of the woods, especially on a global scale, but for the time being, my family are doing okay and I hope yours are too, and that things will look up soon. Aside from all that, what have I been up to? Since March, I've had the wonderful opportunity to work as a designer for a New Zealand-based lifestyle clothing brand. This brand work with both men's and women's day wear. I will say here that it is not the same style as what you would expect from me here. There's no rainbows, unfortunately, and the New Zealand market is very different as opposed to overseas. But I've really enjoyed the work, and some of the garments I've seen through from concept to production will actually be entering stores in the next few weeks to months for summer 2020. When some of my favourite pieces are out, I'll most likely share them on social media, but probably not on YouTube. If you're interested, my socials are in the description below. With this being my first official position at a clothing brand, technically, it has been quite the journey since March. We all know the design development process takes a long time, but when you're in the middle of it, it feels like the opposite. Deadlines are everything, and my position also impacts other people's too, which sounds like a lot of pressure, and it is, but it's also quite motivating too, especially when you start to see results and garments coming back from production to be sold in stores. I have learned a crazy amount in the past few months, some stuff I knew from school, but a lot of it you just can't really prepare for until you're there and working. It's a lot to do, but it's also really satisfying to look back on also. And then in other news, there's also a small collab project thing coming up later this year with a roller skating brand, which is also very exciting. I've been learning how to skate too for the past few months. I'll make a video about my progress eventually, but it has been quite the experience and I still have quite a long way to go until I can confidently say that I'm comfortable on skates. It's been a lot of fun though and a great reason to get out and exercise. I want this YouTube space to be a enjoyable place. Since I'm working full time now, I want this to be where I experiment with content and creative projects. Don't expect an explosion of new content coming up soon, but I am looking forward to what the rest of the year has in store. And here is the final outfit. I have only worn this jacket a few times so far, but the paint is holding up well. The key is to just keep the layers as thin as possible, as the paint will need to flex with the material or it can likely crack and flake off. I'll most likely wear the jacket more than the scorch just because it's easier to style up. But overall, I'm pretty happy with how it all turned out. 
Thank you for watching everyone. This was a pretty relaxed project to do because it wasn't starting from scratch with making an entirely new garment, but it was quite a nice process to take something that has been loved previously for many years and turn it into something else that will still be loved for many years to come. It was also great to not be able to stress so much about the entire process because it wasn't that difficult. So I hope this was helpful in some way or that you enjoyed watching it. So anyway, I will see you later. All the best. Bye.